What's up guys, Logan here. And today's video is gonna be on the steps I took to become a foreign volunteer in Ukraine, what I had to do to get over there, and how my first day in Ukraine went, um, my first full day as a uh, foreign volunteer in Ukraine, and the people I met along the way. As many of you know, and some of you may not know, my journey began when I started my group, Apparition Group. Um, it was myself, and I was networking with a bunch of guys on Instagram and online to get over to Ukraine to train, assist in whatever ways we could, bring supplies, and work with the Ukrainians. Um, and that is the process I went to to actually get to Ukraine, was networking online and meeting different commanders and guys that were already there or going over and building a relationship with them to get myself over there. So as I had mentioned previously, I was networking with a ton of dudes in different industries before I'd even went over for my first trip. A specific follower who worked in the medical industry donated uh, 30 RTS tactical IFAX himself, which is over $5,100 worth of IFAX. I'll go ahead and put the uh, the um, checkout summary screenshot that he had sent me, but uh, I took all 30 of these over with me on my first trip and handed them out to the first platoon that I trained with. So I boarded my flight in Pittsburgh, and I already knew exactly who I was going to be linking up with um, once I landed in Poland. And when I eventually arrived to Ukraine, I knew the units I was going to be working with, the guys I was going to be with, and where I was going. During this plane ride, I ran into a medical student and a former Marine 0311 like myself, and we started talking, um, and we obviously asked each other where we were heading to, found out we were going to the same place. Um, not the exact same unit, but we were both heading to Ukraine. That was our destination, so we shared contacts. I, uh, my itinerary, I was landing in Krakow. He was going to be landing in Warsaw, Poland, so we had made a plan. Once I landed in Krakow, he would take a train, we would meet up in Krakow, and we would head into Ukraine together to Medica. Uh, the border crossing between Ukraine and Poland. So the last picture you guys saw, that was me, who I'll call G and V on the train that was us standing there talking. That picture was taken by a Ukrainian journalist. Um, and these videos here are at Medica, the which I said is the border crossing between Poland and Ukraine. Um, on the train, walking up uh, through the streets at night, and then finally us all in a train station in Ukraine. Um, me, G, and V, uh, working our way towards the east. So this was the first building that we made it to when we got into Ukraine. We uh, got a hold of our contact. Our contact had someone take us to a uh, an old government building. Um, it was completely fenced, had a gate. The gate had a code, um, and there were signs warning the general public to stay away. When we got inside, this was the main hallway, uh, the first picture you see, and there were guys in all the rooms, um, there was a kitchen, there was a med room, and as soon as we got there, we immediately had an air raid. Sleeping arrangements were honestly luxury. Um, isomats on hardwood floors. The building was so big that the guy in charge literally just said, hey, Go find you and your guys a room. So me and the guys went. We found a room, set our isomats and sleeping bags out, set our gear up, uh, locked the door. And yeah, that was that. The only, um, the only thing that put a damper on it was the amount of air raids. The next clip I'll show you will be me getting V up um, in the middle of an air raid and getting them down to the shelter because there were explosions pretty close in the distance. We're going down. Holy shit, man. We were then able to witness some of the local damage in certain residential areas, apartment buildings taken out by missiles and rocket strikes, um, and just the overall scale of the damage um, and the severity of the conflict. You have to remember this was very early on in the war. The war had only been going on a few weeks to a month at this time. Um, and just seeing this in person in comparison to on a TV from home is pretty surreal. Um, but it motivated us to get to work immediately for our guys. So literally later that evening, um, even exhausted as we all were, we, uh, we made a game plan and we started training. And these are just a few pictures of random rounds and grenades and things that were in the building. Guys are like getting familiar with the different rounds and shells and grenades and everything. So I just snapped pictures while I could.
And from there, we immediately jumped into training. And don't be too quick to judge these Ukrainians. This was literally the first 30 minutes of their first day ever training. They'd obviously done like static rifle ranges where you shoot at targets, but they'd never done anything with maneuvering. They'd never worked on a rifle squad like this. And this was their first time being able to do this inside CQB and being able to rotate in and out of a leadership billet. They were rotating the squad leaders and their ages varied from 18 years old all the way up to 60. Not only did we hit extremely hard on weapons handling and buildings mount CQB and moving as a squad, we also hit extremely hard on TCCC, CLS, which is actually the most paramount training on the uh, battlefield, I would say is medical. Tell them to put all your pressure right there on the knee. It, it, that will it, not, yeah, that fucking will. sucks for him, but you're helping him. That way, once you get it up, you have that pressure high and tight, like literally all the way up here, tight as shit. But this allows you, because if he's moving around like that, he's going to be bleeding. He's going he's gonna to lose more blood. And I just want to take a minute to give a huge thanks to all the interpreters I had uh, during this process and both of these trips uh, before I learned the language myself. Barboza, first interpreter I ever had in Ukraine. Dude, I know you're still over there hooking and jabbing. So I'm not going to say too much, but I just, I really appreciate everything you did for us, for the group, for everyone involved. You translated all the TCCC. You wrote every page on a whiteboard erased, wrote, erased, wrote to make sure the guys really knew what was going on. If they had any further in-depth questions you were able to answer while I demonstrated, uh, dude, I hope you're safe, man. I miss you, and I hope that helmet's treating you good. And Moran, thank you for everything as well, brother. From a second trip, you made every transition so much easier, getting to places, getting gear, talking to commanders, uh, just everything in general. You guys are truly in my opinion, one of the, the most important parts of a group, of a team, a squad, platoon, what have you, interpreters are, are it. And one last thing, guys. It's not off subject, but it's off the main like topic we were on. This is a uh, Russian warship stamp um, after the Ukrainians had sunk it earlier on in the war. One of the guys gave me one of these, and I actually have an entire sheet of uh, these stamps. I just thought it was something cool to show you. I know a lot of you guys have seen them before. Um, but for those of you who haven't, I just figured I'd show you because it's cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, I got a whole sheet. I literally have it uh, in a shadow box framed up on the wall. But guys, I appreciate all the support um, recently. Um, and here soon, more adventure videos will be coming out, especially with Doc and I. So guys, just stay updated on that. And if you like this video, if you like my journeys, the things I do, the things I've done, uh, please give me a uh, please subscribe. Please give me a like, a comment if you want. Um, it helps grow the channel and it helps me out. And guys, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.